Now we're looking at section four. Your outline says to read page 192. And what I want you to pay specific attention to is this sentence here that talks about the percent problem. A is P percent of W. And it talks below it about what A represents, which is the, the amount, sometimes called the percentage. You have to be careful with this, though, because the other one is percent, which is the P. That's the rate. That's the one that has the percent sign beside it. And then the whole quantity, sometimes called the base. So we're going to go with A for the amount, W for the whole quantity, and P for the percent or the rate. Now, the two things that you're going to want to keep in mind, though, are two equations that are on that page. And they're both proportions, and it just depends on how you want to think of it. The first one is A over W equals P over 100. And it's the amount over the whole equals the percent over 100. The other way sometimes people like to think of it is instead of this A over W, use is over of equals the P over 100. Because sometimes this is easier when you're looking at a percent problem. You find the number that comes after the word of, and it goes there. You find the percent, and it goes there. The only other number is usually around the word is, and it goes there. So sometimes it's easier to think of it in that way. You're also going to want to remember this sentence so that when you have a word problem, you can fill it in and make it easier to solve. And that is a is P percent of the whole. So you're going to look at a word problem and you're going to find the whole amount, like your whole salary or something like that. You're going to find the percent and you're going to find whatever stands for the amount that you may be looking for or it may be given. And once you get it in a sentence, you can then substitute it into this proportion equation that you have. So that's the approach that we're going to take with these problems. So we're going to look first at example four on page 192. So let's go back and look at the book. Example four on page 192 says, for each of the following cases, identify the percent, the whole quantity, and the amount. So the percent or the part, and then write a proportion. And so this first one says, what number is 18% of 200? And so if we're looking at that proportion that we have, what number is 18% of 200? And we want to fit it to this proportion that we have. If you look at this, the number that comes after of is 200. So when we're doing our is over of, that would mean that the 200 would go in place of the of. So I can erase the of and I can put a 200. The 18% would go in place of the P, because that's the percent. And then you don't have any other numbers in this, but you do see the word is, and we see what number. Since we don't have a number for that one, that's where you would just put an X or something like that to be able to solve this proportion. So when we match it up, we have that of is in place of the 200, which means it's in place of the W in the original. So all we're trying to get you to do in this one is to find the correct parts. So if we're looking at the second example, and it's just so that you could solve it, part B says 18% of 200 is what number? So if I were trying to do match it up for my proportion, is over of equals P over 100. The percent again is 18. We find the word of and 200 is after it. So we would put 200 in place of the word of. And then we don't have anything else, but it's around the word is, so we put our X there. So we're just matching this up. Let's do one more. Let's do D, and then you can go through and try to do some of these on your own. 63 is what percent of 420? So is over of equals P over 100. 
We try to find the word of. 420 comes after it, so I would take and in place of the word of, I would write my number. I don't have a percent, so there's the percent sign. Since I don't have a percent, I put the X there. And then is, 63 is around the word is, so 63 would go there. Pinpoint on the word of first, it makes these easier. So I will go through and try to do the rest of them in example four. Your answers are on the next page, on page 193. So see if you can set up the correct proportion with that one. So we're going to go on into example five. Example five is a word problem. And it says, in a certain class, there are 500 points possible. The lowest C grade is 65% of the possible points. How many points are equal to the lowest C grade? Now this is going to take some reading skills, but in every percent problem, what you want to do is try to match up this sentence with what you have in the word problem. And remember that W stands for the whole thing. So this says, in a certain class, there are 500 points possible. 500 is all the points that you have. So we're talking about out of those 500 points, and it says the lowest C grade is 65%. So we do have a percentage too. It wants to know how many points are equal to that lowest C grade. So we don't know the amount that we're looking for, but we have it all matched up now. And we can do our little proportion, is over of equals P over 100. And I can match stuff up. 65 over 100. I find the word of, so 500 goes here. I don't know how many points. Now I have a proportion, and we solved this in the last section. We solved things just like this, so we could take our calculator and we could do 65 times 500, and we would get 32,500. On this side, we have the number and the variable. So now we divide by the number sitting beside the variable. And when we do 32,500 divided by 100, we get 325. So if I could get 325 points, I would have a C in that class. So that's how that one would work. Just make sure that you match up all these with my little percent sentence. W. So let's go through example six. If your monthly salary is $4,500 and 21% is withheld for taxes and social security, how much money will be withheld from your tax on pay, or your check on payday? Now you have to make sure that you get the A and the W in the right place. Remember that W is the whole thing and we would like to think that our salary is more than the taxes. So the salary is going to be the whole thing. So we've got P percent, so 21% of my whole salary, and I have a whole salary there. We don't know how much the tax is, so I can do is over of equals P over 100. I found the word of, so we can put 4,500 here. I don't know what's around the is, that's my A. My percent is 21, and I can fill it in. So now I can do the math, just like in the last section, I can do 21 times 4,500 is 94,500. 100 times X is 100X. Divide both sides by 100, and I get that X is equal to $945. So, if I make $4,500 a month, they're going to charge me $945 in taxes if it's at a 21% rate. All you're doing is taking this sentence and matching up the things from the word problem in the sentence. That's going to be the hardest part. So again, let's look at example 7. It says, you make a $25 purchase and the clerk adds $2.25 for sales tax. This doesn't seem right to you, so you want to know what percent tax has been charged. So here's my sentence again. A is P percent of the whole. Okay, my whole purchase was $25, so I do know that. I don't know the percent. That's what I'm looking for. The little bit that they charged me was $225. So 
So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to check is over of equals P over 100. I don't know the percent, so I'm going to leave it as a P. I could put an X there if I wanted to. Find the word of, that's the 25. Find the word is, that's the 225. So $2.25 times 100 is 225. 25 times P is 25P. Divide both sides by 25, and I get 9. So this is telling me that the tax rate is 9%. And so if in that town the tax rate's 9%, then they charge me correctly. If the tax rate's less than that, then you know they did not charge you correctly. So that's what it's asking you. It's asking you what percent has been charged, and you just match it up again until your sentence. So let's look at example eight. A is P percent of the whole. Let's see. Your neighbors tell, tell you that they paid $44.37 in taxes last year and that this amounted to 29% of their total income. What was their total income? Again, we would like to think that our income is higher than the taxes, so that's going to be the whole. We do know the percentage. We know what they charged us in taxes. So is over of equals P over 100. So we have of is the W. We know the percent. We know the word around is, you know the number around is, so we can do 4437 times 100, so that's 443700. 29 times W is 29W. Divide both sides by 29, and I get that W is 15,300 dollars. So that seems really high. It says that they paid forty-four thirty-seven in taxes last year, and this was 29% of their total income. What was their total income? Now let's see if this makes any sense. If I were to look at this and I said, okay, if this is my total income, then 50% of that would be half of it. So let's see what half of that is. Half of that would be seventy-six fifty. I'm paying less than that in taxes. So it should be less than 50%, and this number is less than 50%, so my answer makes sense. This is the answer they're looking for, but it's always good to go back in your head and just see if it makes any sense. The only other thing that's in this section is percent increase or decrease, and you can use the same formula for both of those. It's not a formula that they give you in your book, so I'm going to give it to you here. And for percent increase and decrease, you can use the formula change divided by original. And a good example of that is number 58 in the homework, which is on page 197. And it shows you, it says a drop from 50 to 10. And it goes ahead and it tells you that that percentage is 80%. And it's a loss of 80%. Well, the way that they're getting that is they're saying... The amount of the change from 50 to 10 would be a change of 40 because 50 minus 10 is 40. The original number here is 50 because I'm going from 50 to 10. So if I take and I do 40 divided by 50, I get 0 0.8. And if I change that to a percentage by moving my decimal over two places to the right, I get 80%. The rest of that problem says... What is the percent gain if I were going from 10 to 50? Again, we can still use the formula change divided by original. The change from 10 to 50 is still 40, but in this case, my original is 10 because I'm going from 10 to 50. So if I do 40 divided by 10, I get 4. And if I change that to a percentage by moving my decimal two places to the right, I would have a 400% gain. So anytime you're doing percent increase or decrease, if you just use change divided by original, 
it will tell you the percent increase or the decrease decrease just make sure that you get the right number as the original and it's the one that you're starting from so if I'm going from 50 to 10 original would be 50 if I'm going from 10 to 50 the original would be the 10 so this is everything in that section you're now ready to do some practice